Hey guys, BAKD here. Today I'm going to be exploring the Sisters of Eve, the Astero. Um, this is a pretty cool frigate. I'm going to be comparing this to the Worm and seeing uh, the benefits of each ship and potentially their usages and what their uh, strengths are. Um, the Astero here, you have uh, three uh, small drone slots two weapon, three mid, three low, three rig slots each. Um, one of the cool benefits of this, it has the uh, same cloaking ops uh, device benefits as a hound or a nemesis or what have you. Um, you can lock immediately out of stealth and it does get a scan strength and resolution bonus there per advanced uh, frigate defense. Um, if you were to fly this ship, I would recommend 5 out of 5 on uh, Advanced Frigate Defense and 5 out of 5 on the Frigate Command Bonus to even make this ship viable. So you do have to skill into it pretty well. 100% um, I would have really high small drone skills. This ship doesn't have very good DPS, but it's cool because it's a cloaking uh, ship with three mid slots so you can potentially fit three scrams and try to jump like uh, retrievers and stuff but uh, going down here per advanced frigate command bonus is really important because it gives 30 percent dps and ehp and armor resistance per level um, which makes this a fairly tanky ship this is a armor tank um, not a shield tank so if we look at our attributes here it is fairly close uh, 1000 versus uh, 1160 but with that additional armor resistances it definitely helps out quite a bit there so um, I went through multiple different combinations on the highest DPS now I'm gonna show you how I have her built and of course you guys can um, give your own opinion and um, tell me what I did wrong or what you think uh, you should put on this ship. And this has a fairly decent power grid so um, with maxed out skills allowing um, the power grid on these medium uh, rapid missile launchers to be fairly low 34 per um, per missile launcher there in the real world I'd probably expect something lower like the next ones downs Heath uh, medium rapids or additional power grid rigs to fit these so this isn't too practical but with completely maxed engineering missile skills everything I was able to fight uh, to equip C type rapids on there these guys have a range of 21 kilometers maxed out um, I put in two target painters and a predator web to slow people down you can switch these out with just about anything I would probably switch one target painter out for a armor rep maybe a large armor rep just to keep you topped up because I have absolutely no tank on this build whatsoever um, we are going to try to rely on the uh, afterburner to essentially uh, give us our tank. So switch a painter out for a uh, armor rep, group armor rep, I might add. Down below, um, I did choose three Mark Seven warriors just because I think this chews into uh, armor and hull a little bit better once we break down. Um, their shield we should be able to just chew right through it um, if you see that is the lowest resistance explosion on armor so I think that is the best and the missiles are an all-around so we should chew through the shield quick and then hull and armor should be uh, you know easy to take off I did equip a, a nest wearing drum damage amplifier just for that uh, little kick of damage we do have it for 44 seconds which is pretty good now if you're trying to rat or something in this you probably don't need your cloaking device um, but this is a covert ops ship so you're probably gonna have this equipped 90% of the time 
If you don't, you can do a ballistic control system if your power grid allows, or you can just put some tank on there, um, which would probably be my recommendation. A small armor repairer or uh, armor resistances if you have your group armor rep there. So this is kind of an open slot. I'm going to leave the cloaking device on because I'm always going to have that on if I were to fly this ship. Now rig wise I tried every different combination um, of rigs to get the highest DPS. So how I have it, I have a 17.5 damage and two speed augmenters for the activation time adjustment. I tried to bundle this, um, let's just put, let's say a missile calefaction on there. We go from 356 to 343. So I tried every different combination I can and it looks like two speeds and a drone damage on this ship is the uh, best route to go for DPS. Um, one thing you could do is you can swap one of these out for a 15 kilometer range on your drones. Um, typically if you have like scrams or webs you're not going to be that far away, 30 kilometers. Um, and you see our drones are 35 kilometers there. So the extra range really isn't needed. I think you are going to be close enough. But let's say you did put three ranges on there. You'd be around 80 kilometers out. You might be able to help out a little bit in a you know, long distance uh, frigate. <laughs> frigate uh, drone killing. But Now for our other side, in order to fit everything... Actually, uh, it doesn't look like I have a power grid rig on this, but on the other side, I did a capacity multiplier. Um, you see, I don't really have anything that uses capacitor on this build. I am completely stable. So you could put anything in this slot, a CCC, you could do more inertia, more velocity to go even faster. And then pretty typical, I did inertia and uh, flight velocity there. Um, another good thing in this spot might even be a targeting, uh, tier 3 targeting rig. I think that might be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go check out the worm really quick and we'll compare them. And then I'll take the Astero out and uh, try to solo some stuff. But you see here we are at 356.29 DPS. All right, so we are now in the worm. I pretty much built it the exact same way, um, but the power grid is slightly lower on this. I actually had to put a power grid rig in to do the same thing as I wanted. And you see we are five away from maxing this baby out. So I will not be able to fit a scram on there. Let's just look at the Predator Scram 7 power grid. So that will not work with this build. You can swap one of these out for a smaller, yeah, only four, <laughs> four power grid maxed out and seven on that. So if you wanted a scram, I would recommend going uh, one step lower on the uh, medium uh, rapid missile launchers. But same thing, I did uh, C-type medium rapids, two target painters, a predator web, you can swap these out for just about anything, whatever your recommendation is. You can do single disruptor. Um, you can do a shield repair. Just about anything there. If we look at the, the worm here, it has substantially high roll bonus for small uh, drone damage there. EHP and a slightly longer range. Um, for this ship, you do want to have it completely maxed out with a small drone operation and a frigate command bonus there. Because you do get shield resistances and uh, kinetic and thermal damage. Um, the range on these are 40 kilometers, which is pretty cool. And the Predator is at 30. Now down below I did about the same thing. You can swap this out for a micro warp drive or a afterburner. You just have to be pretty... Uh, coherent about your power grid 
I did a uh, drone damage amplifier and a small C-type shield booster and these can be changed to a ballistic control just about anything the only difference between the two is it does not have the co covert ops option and the DPS is slightly higher but it looks like the tank is about the same yeah we have a pretty good tank on this ship with that extra uh, extra uh, EHP or shield resistances we get now I did the exact same thing I combined every different combination of um, rigs to then find out that one damage for drones and two activation gives you the highest DPS that this ship can offer up top I had to do a power grid 3 just to fit everything I wanted um, and of course you can mix and match uh, modules and play with the power grid from there but this is a completely maxed worm so you might have to downgrade some of the modules that I have equipped currently I did a semiconductor just because I have a shield booster and the uh, drone amplification and then I did a flight velocity just to go a little bit faster now I'm going to undock really quick and just see the hot settings on this and then we'll call it good on the worm so we're going to pop that and that I'll just turn on our shield booster so with a um, afterburner we're going 1660 with completely max skills it's not the best in the world but you're able to speed tank with that our drone DPS goes up to 350 at 40 kilometers still and we're at 507 hot which is pretty good 154 with the missiles um, with this ship you of course want to be orbiting probably around 18 18 ish for these to hit correctly maybe a little bit lower from there now I have my shield booster on and we are completely stable on this build so you can rep this uh, pretty much all day once you turn on the disruptor and stuff on those other ones it might slightly drain but you should be uh, good to speed tank turn that off and on as needed all right and I just equipped a small uh, C type micro warp drive and we're going about 3587 meters a second which is pretty good I just want to showcase how fast this can go with a uh, micro warp drive all right let's uh, fit this up um, to our uh, Astero and see the difference all right back in my Astero um, I'm gonna pop my afterburner let's just check out our speeds we're going 1556 so just slightly uh, slower than the worm and just so you know in order to fit both of these I had to slot a power grid rig in um, and we're still pretty much maxed out but I just took out the polycarbon and put a uh, power grid on there okay let's turn this off let's do our drone amplification and our micro warp drive so our drone uh, DPS is at 294 and our total DPS is uh, 418 so a uh, slightly lower DPS on both sides um, it also has a lower um, medium rapid missile DPS which slightly cuts into that we are going 3355 meters a second for the micro warp drive um, so that is slightly slower as well let's go ahead and dock here so if you were planning on uh, doing a drone boat as a frigate I think the worm takes the speed and overall DPS um, category the main benefit to this ship I think is um, when it comes out if it does the ability to locate people and uh, the ability to covert ops stealth um, which is big this is basically a, a hound on crack 
because you have two medium rapids and three fairly good DPS drones. So if you fit three scrams on here, which I'll see if I can uh, without the power grid being messed up. And uh, yeah, you can take this out, hunt retrievers, ventures, and uh, get out quickly. It's kind of like a Hound 2 in a sense, but the Hound 2 takes uh, large torpedoes, which really doesn't hit ventures very well. And even re retrievers, it doesn't do too much damage. So, all right, let's uh, dock up and head into a mission here. Well, I had to play with the power grid um, quite a bit to fit three Predator Scrams on there. Um, if you were to be building this with three Scrams, like a, uh, a Covert Ops Retriever <laughs> Ganker, um, you're 100% going to have to move down on your uh, C-type medi medium rapid missile launchers. Um, this is a completely maxed frigate and I have one tier 3 power grid there. And I wasn't able to fit anything but a damage control down here. Of course the amplifier than that. Um, but I'm completely maxed 113 out of 115. So the damage control hopefully... Um, will save your life you probably won't be fighting too many people unless someone tries to jump you will get in a retriever but it definitely is possible to fit three scrams on there potentially doing interruptive scrams as well and just kind of getting right up into their face um, but it definitely is possible with a little uh, play there and your DPS will go up or down slightly depending on the variance you use um, you also could do yeah armor resistances, just kind of anything in that slot, I guess. Um, this has fairly good tank. Yeah, we're about 34 up to 63% tank there. Could even slot a uh, explosion, explosive resistance uh, rig on there. Bring it up to 50-60%, which has pretty good resistances across the board. Okay, enough playing around. Let's get into a anomaly. I'm going to just kind of fit it with the highest DPS. Um, kind of impractical build and we'll go from there okay I am currently in a tier 10 um, large Sancha anomaly um, going 15 50 meters a second let's go ahead and just try to take a frigate out first um, how I have this fit is a ballistic control and two damage amplifiers, or a drone amplifier I mean. Let's go ahead and deploy our drones. Now I typically would want to be within web range to slow them down. Hmm. They're just chewing through that T10 drone, it's actually pretty good. So now let's orbit this one. Let's just lob a volley off. Okay, that doesn't do too much. Was that 480 damage um, with the missile volley? So the whole of your damage, I think, is going to be coming from the drones. Um, let's go ahead and just pop our ballistic and launch one more. That's not bad, 500. Let's pop our drone amplification. 466 hot. Let's just go ahead and deploy our drones on this baby. So I'll probably go within 15. We are comfortably speed tanking this as well. I'll just probably go into 14 so I can web them. Target painter. Let's focus fire and web them. Let's see how fast we can chew through this mauler. I'm actually doing some pretty heavy DPS. About through his shield. Clips came out of nowhere there. He wants to kill me. I'm 
I guess you could get a tracking computer or whatever. I'm not too familiar with the uh, the drone stuff, um, but let's see what other weapon upgrades for drones I have. Drone damage. You could do two drone damages and just kind of cycle them. Uh, navigation computer. Just more flight velocity. Tracking link. Can't equip one of those. Power grid's too high. So I think that's a good medium. You could do a ballistic and a drone or two drone amplifiers. Um, of course, remember I would switch the target painter out for like a group armor repair just to keep you topped up. Um, or whatever variation of whatever you guys use. Let's see how fast we can take out this prophecy. Just chewing through it, slow but steady. Our armor resistances are good, cap seems to be stable, targeting is pretty strong. We're at a 31 meter signature radius with an afterburner. Scan resolution, scan points up to 14, that's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like we're just comfortably uh, speed tanking this, so a T10 anomaly is definitely possible probably going to take two or three hours because larges are crazy but if you did like a small maybe an hour or two I'm chewing right away at him Well, I think that's going to do it. Um, I'm sure you don't want to see me circling these guys, shooting them over and over with the same DPS. Um, but it's definitely doable with absolutely no tank on, apparently. Um, I think that's going to do it for the video, though. Um, if you guys could just comment below how you would build your Estero. Um, what rigs you'd put on. Just kind of any tips for anybody reading through the comments would be good. Um, I don't really fly these ships, so I'm just kind of going off what I think is best and what other people have told me about this ship, or their worm at least. Um, I think for DPS, the worm has a higher DPS overall. Um, for this ship, the covert ops is huge. Um, being able to stealth around and bang people out, even having a scram or two and sneaking up on somebody and then outputting some pretty good DPS at range. Because um, this guy, even without your missiles on, we are doing 231 damage per second at 35 kilometers. So you could realistically be around 28 kilometers with your Predator Disruptor and just send your drones out. Um, if we just check in here... So we do get a drone EHP 30% per level. So they're still going to be killed pretty easily, but um, they're not going to get one bang by missile users or whatnot. So they'll be able to stand up to a little bit of tank. Alright guys, uh, what do you think about the Stero? I'll see you on the next one. Peace.